Good evening. Welcome to the June 20th, 2024 Clark Council meeting. Uh, I welcome everyone here. Today's the longest day of the year. Welcome to summer, one of my favorite days. This time I'd like to ask the clerk for the roll call, please. Councilman Hund. Here. Councilman Mazzarella is absent. Councilman Minitti. Here. Councilman O'Connor. Here. Councilman Smith. Here. Councilman Toll. Here. Council President Albanese. Here. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act as adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by sending written advance notice of at least 48 hours to the Star Ledger, Union County Hawk, Union County Local Source, and Tap into Clark by posting such meeting agenda on the bulletin board and town hall reserved for such announcements, as well as the official website of the township and the proper filing of said notice. Formal action may be taken at this meeting. Council, I'd like to ask for a motion to suspend the regular order of business. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councilman Toll, and that was Smith. Councilman Smith. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we're going to um, suspend the regular business for a special proclamation for Eagle Scout Anderson Schifferstein for his project. And first, I'd like to ask the clerk to please read the proclamation, and then we'll have Anderson come up and meet with the mayor. Excuse me, you can come up now, Anderson. Come on up. Whereas the community of Clark Township takes great pride in recognizing and honoring outstanding individuals who demonstrate exceptional dedication and service to our community. And whereas the attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout is a significant achievement that reflects the highest ideals of leadership, service, and commitment to community, and whereas Anderson Schifferstein, a distinguished member of our community, has exemplified these qualities through his exemplary service project, and whereas Anderson's Eagle Scout project at the Clark Township Library demonstrates his ability to plan, budget time, and provide leadership to others extended throughout the project's ex execution, as evidenced by his initiative in soliciting Lego donation kits his hands-on contribution in building a Lego display case, and his assistance in organizing the Lego sets into boxes for patrons of all ages to check out. And whereas the Lego Lending Library project not only enhances the educational and recreational offerings of our public library to the Clark community, but also fosters a sense of community engagement and inclusivity by providing accessible resources for all ages, now, therefore, I, Salvatore Bonacorso, Mayor of Clark, New Jersey, do hereby commend and honor Anderson Schifferstein for his outstanding leadership, dedication, and service to our community. His initiative, ingenuity, and commitment to making a positive difference are truly commendable and serve as an inspiration to all residents. We extend our heartfelt appreciation to Anderson Schifferstein, his family, friends, fellow scouts, and all who supported him in the successful completion of this impactful project. May Anderson Schifferstein's contributions continue to enrich the lives of our community members for generations to come. And it's signed, Mayor Sal Bonacorso. Before I present the proclamation to Anderson, I'd just like to say, um, I don't think his last name is any stranger to Clark, right? If you head up down Madison Hill Road, long-standing community family here, and uh, Anderson is a young man of many talents. It's not only with the Boy Scouts and achieving his Eagle Scout today. He's a honor student. He's an athlete. He's a good citizen. He was in our Memorial Day parade. He decorated the float that the Schifferstein family uh, always brings to the parade every year. He's always helping out on his dad's uh, business on uh, Madison Hill Road. And I know him for quite some time. Now, the only thing 
I can't do any more with him is I can't beat him in one-on-one. -on -one. He's much too tall to come to basketball. But, you know, this, again, Eagle Scout, Boy Scout, Scouting, Girl Scouts, however you want to put it all together is a, is a great, great part of growing up and um, doing things for the community and, you know, just it's USA all the way. I mean, what else, how else can I say it? So, Anderson, I'd like to give you this proclamation on behalf of myself and the Township Council, and uh, we're you. very proud of you and your efforts, and we Thank wish you. you all the best in the upcoming years, and we'll take a picture right here, okay? All right. Folks, come on up. And his family is coming up. up. I think they're very familiar to our community. We can see that Anderson's eating a lot of food off the farm, right? <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. All right. Thank you. Man. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you, Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. All righty. And while I'm, what's that? Thank you. And while I'm up here, I will uh, give a plug. The Sheperstein Farm on Madison Hill Road, fruits, <laughs> vegetables, flowers, tomato plants, shrubbery, mulch, you got it. They're there, good people. And the one thing I will say about the Sheperstein family, they always support our community. No matter what the adventure is, they're there and been there for a lot of years. So as we always say, help the ones in Clark that help our community all the time, and we appreciate their friendship to the town. And, your achievement tonight, Anderson, is, is remarkable and terrific. So God bless you and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. So Anderson, on behalf of the council, we congratulate you. And um, if you have some time or interest in Legos, please participate in the benefits of the project that Anderson put together. Um, 30 uh, Lego, um, Packs were donated to the library through his efforts. There's a complete video on YouTube, on the uh, Township YouTube channel on his project. So I hope you'll take a look at that. And one of the things to keep in mind, it's, it's not just, you know, this is for family activities, uh, families to get involved with, and Legos for, are for all ages now. So they have all different types of Legos available. So thank you again. And uh, this time, if, if you'd like to stay, you're welcome to stay, or you can go on and uh, enjoy this lovely long day. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, the council for a motion to resume the regular order of business. Thank you, Councilman Tull. I'll second. Thank you, Councilman Minitti. That's right. At this time, we're going to move on to communications from the mayor and reports of the township officers. Thank you, Madam President, members of council, and ladies and gentlemen of the community that are here tonight. Uh, I'd just like to run down a couple of items here. Uh, Rock the Block, that um, GWAC, our Chamber of Commerce, is having our first annual street fair here. It's going to be out in front of the um, Brewer Municipal Building and the high school, and eventually someday when the lower part of Westfield Avenue is built, that's where it would tend to be to promote the businesses that are going to be going in there eventually. So uh, it's from 10 to 5. Uh, it seems like it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a little warm, so come out, enjoy yourself. There's food, there's drinks, there's lots of stands, vendors. I, I think it's going to be a great, great day and our first ever in the community, so I'm very happy and proud to see that happen. Um, I see some friends here from the reservoir tonight, uh, reservoir committee group. And I would like to remind you that the meeting you need to be at is July 2nd, right here in the council chambers. Union County will be hosting that meeting. And that is when you could get up and give your compliments, complaints, or opinions. Um, I do want to remind you that this is a free country and you're uh, at a public meeting and you're wel welcome to come up and speak about it. But I'm going to tell you right up front, there's nothing we're going to tell you because it's not our project. It's not our meeting. That is July 2nd. If you want to voice your opinion, you can be there. I know there was about 15 people down at the county last night. Good for you. Uh, people need to hear your opinion, whether it's pro, con. 
as mayor, I've been hearing a lot of both out there. I have people telling me they're pro the project, they're con the project, and there's other people telling me somewhere in the middle. As I said to them, I appreciate their um, interest and their concerns or their compliments, but this is a Union County Commissioner's project. Uh, the BA and myself are in contact with the Union County Commissioner quite often. I was on the phone with him this morning talking about certain concerns, certain things, and they've been very, very good to deal with. The only thing I can tell you folks is my 28 years in dealing with Union County, um, they've always done the right thing for our community, starting with Esposito's Park and so on and so forth with many projects. It's nice to see um, different parties in government, like in Clark and the county, get along so well and work together so well because the way I've always done my business with them is you're not going to see me screaming and yelling at them. I believe in communication through face-to-face con -face conversation across the table, on a telephone. That's the way I've been very successful. I do want to remind the reservoir folks, if you don't mind me calling you that tonight, I grew up on the reservoir, Victoria Drive. During, I know that body of water like no one because I did everything there was to do on that body of water. And uh, about four or five years ago, I started the project to dredge the reservoir. And that is still my main concern is getting that reg reservoir dredged. Um, I did communicate with them when they said they were going to look about some open space recreation, some ideas I had that I don't think our community would like and to be careful of doing those things. They know where I stand on those issues. And in the meantime, it's their project, folks. If you like to say something, be my guest, but it's, you know, the right church, if I can say that, on July 2nd, but this is the wrong parish to talk to because we don't have answers to your questions and we're not going to be able to have them. It's going to be a county meeting. I will be here and I'm sure many members of council will be here and we will not be sitting up there. We'll be sitting down here and they will handle the meeting. It's going to be, uh, they put it from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock right here on July 2nd. So I'm sure we'll see you all out then. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Clark and the Kerry Group on Terminal Avenue are having a um, photo contest. It's f of about people, places, nature, wildlife, and you can find out all more information on our Clark social media or I'm sure our website. This is for 18 and over, and this is for people who live, work, or school in the Clark community. So I think that should be pretty exciting and interesting, and let's see what some nice photos you may come up with of our great community and people who are here. I'd like to uh, congratulate all the graduates from pre-K right on up to college. Uh, I was at the high school graduation last night as I normally attend every year, and it was a very nice young group of uh, young lady and young men. They were well behaved, there were some great accolades, and there was some really great um, con um, statements about achievement. The first thing I do every year when I go to the high school graduation, I get this is fantastic. I go right to the page of where our young ladies and men, our young men are going to which college and universities. And I'm going to tell you something. People say Clark education is not up to par. Well, I completely disagree with that because when you look at the universities that our young men and women are attending, they're tops in the nation. And, uh, you know, we also have our boys and girls going into trade school and beauty school and military, and I wish them all the best because I was very proud to see what went on there last night. I'm not going to take Councilman Smith's thunder, but the summer camp will be starting July, right in July. The pool is open. Get in touch with Ralph if you haven't joined. And I'd like to thank everyone who attended and uh, participated in the Memorial Day parade and ceremony. It was a great job by Ralph Bernardo and his staff, and I thought it was a great parade, and I was happy to see the great turnout, remembering our fallen heroes. It's very important to remember that. I have a police report from May 1 to June 19th. There were motor vehicle stops, 338 motor vehicle stops in town. There were 59 radar details out, 
and there was 14 traffic enforcements. That's when they send the car out to watch people blowing stop signs or things of that nature. There's certain making illegal turns. They do that, and that's a good thing, too. Um, I'm going to tell you folks that it's summer. People are out walking. People are on bicycles. Please drive safely. I know the town empties out. The county empties out. This is the only time during the year you can go out on a Saturday night and not worry about getting shut out at a table because everybody's down the shore, especially with weather like this. Be careful out there. But the thing is, is that, you know, speeding has been a concern of a lot of neighborhoods. Please drive with care. Please just drive with care. Um, you know, you never know who's going to jump out behind a car. A human being, an animal, you, you don't want to see that happen. So thank you for my report, uh, for listening to my report tonight, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Mayor. That might be the first round of applause I got in a long time on an on a opening report. So guys, come back like next month. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we're going to move on to uh, council uh, member co committee reports. Councilman Hund. Thank you very much, Council President. I have the Clark Police Department monthly report to piggyback on what the mayor just stated. On May t uh, for the month of May, we saw a total of 2,203 calls for service, including but not limited to 102 ambulance requests, three arrive requests, three fire department requests, 11 motor vehicle and resident lockouts, 79 alarm calls, 89 motor vehicle accidents, 31 shoplifting and theft, eight fraud and identity theft, and 234 were 911 calls, and 1,383 were miscellaneous calls. There was a total of 24 adult arrests, including but not limited to 13 for shoplifting, two for DUI, one for aggravated assault, and five warrants. The Youth Bureau, the youth bureau handled a total of 21 cases included including but not limited to one for aggravated assault, one criminal mischief, one for harassment, one for disorderly conduct, six for off offenses against the family, and 20 cases were in-house disposition and one was formally charged. That completes my report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Hunt. Councilman Manitti. Uh, thank you, Council President. In the month of May, the Clark Fire Department responded to 21 calls. This total is 185 for the year. The calls include, but are not limited to numerous odor and alarm calls. There was one call for mutual aid from another town, one call for a motor vehicle incident on the Garden State Parkway, and one call for medical assistance in collaboration with the Clark EMS. Um, as always, I want to thank the members of the Clark Fire Department for their hard work, dedication, keeping our town safe. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman Minetti. Councilman O'Connor. Thank you. From the Finance Committee, the Township continues to be able to meet its current obligations. And unfortunately, I do not have a report from the Emergency Squad. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Smith. Hey, thank you. From the uh, Pool and Rec Department. Uh, if you're interested in still registering your child for the Clark Summer Rec Program, please do so ASAP. Or you can contact Ralph Bernardo Emberly, Emberly Lambert at 732-428-8400. The rec camp is open to Clark residents only in pre-K through ninth grade. It runs July 1st through August 8th, and it goes Monday through Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 12. Regarding the Clark Community Pool, uh, with the hot weather we've been experiencing, it's a perfect time uh, to please uh, go on down, register, and get a membership. The pool's open every day now through Labor Day, September 2nd. Uh, you can register online at www.ourclark.com, or you can always stop down by the pool and register in person. This is the 50th anniversary of the pool this year, so there's a lot of events planned uh, throughout the summer uh, season. So uh, come on out, have some fun, and that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Councilman Toll. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm just going to, from last month, and I'm going to keep it quick and short. Last month, I said to the residents of this community, I went on record to be, have your voice heard. Very simple. Uh, with regards to the reservoir, I'm talking about the resi. The county is giving you an opportunity to be heard. Your opinion is your thoughts. Please attend the meeting. If they have a type of a sign up or enrollment, do what they ask. Be heard. I spoke my piece. I said I want open space preservation. Passive, non-structured, and dredge, dredge, dredge. I repeated my comments. I'm going to leave it at that. 
I hope to see you at the meeting and be heard. That's what this is all about. This is America. This is Clark, New Jersey. This is Union County, New Jersey. They have this saying. Thank you. Madam President, may I ask a question? Yes. Councilman, were you down at the freeholder meeting last night? I was not. That's working. Okay, yeah, well, obviously work comes first. Did you go last month after the um, me our meeting, I think the next night was that, were you in that one? No, sir. I know there were some people down there and I haven't seen you to find out you aren't. Are you gonna be here July 2nd? I plan on it, sir. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just fig trying to figure out if you were there because I know they told me there was and I wasn't sure who was there. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to give a report on the library. Uh, last month I mentioned to you that um, we had a suspension of our catalog for the library. Uh, as you may recall, less than a year ago we joined the LMXAC. So this is a consortium of libraries. As a result of joining that consortium, we now have 1.2 million resources available to us. When you log on to the library website, any time of the day, night, any time of the year. Um, you can therefore uh, see if there's something available at a local library. I know if I couldn't find something in Clark, I'd look on the Rawway site, I'd look on the Cranford site, etc. Now you can just see it all in one site. If you want to go pick it up, you can pick it up, or you can order it, and it'll be delivered to the library um, for your convenience. So again, you have access to all of that. In addition, there are other features that are available. One is called Hoopla, which has various um, online movies, music, etc. So I suggest that you take a look at that. So it's very nice to be uh, a part of the largest collection in the state of New Jersey. Um, we are saving a lot of money in all the purchases that the library makes as a result of joining this consortium. So when we buy equipment, when we buy subscriptions, we're getting extra discounts because now we are bigger and have more resources available to us. So the reason for the um, suspension uh, over two weeks was because we are, they have changed their name and upgraded the software that's available and it's called Stella, which uh, I probably in Latin means a star, but uh, uh, and that acronym also means star in Italian. So um, I hope you will take a look at that. Uh, you see the, the parking lot's pretty full tonight. Um, tonight is the kickoff for the children's summer reading program. There are going to be a lot of reading programs. Monday night, I think they have a uh, adult bingo to kick off that program. Um, and there'll be many, many programs available this summer in addition to all the summer reading programs. I suggest that you um, <coughs> check out the library's website, and then take advantage of all those programs this summer. And also, if you can, take a look at Anderson's project. There are Legos, uh, there are sets of Legos. There's one of the um, Titanic, it's huge. So there are some, some of the um, kits are, can only be used at the library, but some can be taken out. Also, uh, Anderson created a display. So when the children or anyone creates um, one of the uh, models, it's put on display for a while. So check out what the kids are doing and the adults are doing, and also check it out for yourself. And that concludes my report on the library. Um, okay, so we're gonna move on to ordinances, appropriations and claims, and the public hearing on proposed ordinances. So I'm gonna turn it over to the clerk at this time. Thank you, Madam President. For the record, no objections have been received in connection with the proposed ordinance. Ordinance 24-11 and ordinance to amend and supplement section two entitled fees of chapter 122 entitled construction codes uniform of the code of the township of Clark. Tom, I'd like to open up this public hearing for this ordinance. I'll move that. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. No, that's okay. Uh, we just, uh, let me, um, we'll do that. Yeah, I'm gonna open it, we'll close it later. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance? Seeing no one, I'll accept Councilman Hun's motion to close the meeting on the uh, discussion. And uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman O'Connor. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, Mr. Ulrich, do you have any further comments on the ordinance before we? 
Yeah, this is a, a quick one. It's only to um, add a fee for back valve, backwash valves um, being installed in commercial buildings to keep stagnant water from mixing with fresh water. Thank you. Okay, Council, do I have a motion to adopt the ordinance? I'll move that. Thank you, Councilman Minetti. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll when you're ready? Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Ordinance adopted. This time we'll move on to the payment of claims. Uh, Councilman O'Connor, will you give your report, please? Thank you. I have reviewed the bills totaling $254,066.54. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, um, I'm going to open up the meeting for anyone who would like to talk about items that are on the agenda. So this is an opportunity for anyone here to come up and talk about items or questions they have about items on the agenda for tonight's resolutions. Seeing no one, I'd like a motion to close this portion of the meeting. So moved. Thank you, Councilman O'Connor. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman Smith. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move on to the resolution, so I'm going to hand it back over to the clerk. First resolution is the council as the ABC board authorizing the annual renewal of alcoholic beverage licenses for the 2024-2025 term. Council, do I have a motion? I'd like to move that. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman Minetti. Uh, we'll take a roll call when you're ready, Madam Clerk. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Okay. Next resolution is Council as the pool utility authorizing the pool rates and fees for the 2024 pool season. Okay, uh, Mr. Ulrich, would you like to make a comment? Um, yeah, so the pool fees are the same. The only thing that we added was a resident military and veteran and a non-resident military or veteran uh, price. So they both get discounts, um, you know, for the, in honor of this service. Thank you. Um, I'll move that. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Do you have a second? I'd like to second that, please. Thank you, Councilman O'Connor. Roll call when you're ready. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Number four is approving the submission of a grant application and execution of a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Valley Road Improvement Project, Section 2. I'll move that, please. Thank you, Councilman Hunt. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Um, yes. Mr. Ulrich, did you want to make a comment? As everybody um, recalls, we got the first half of the grant for in 2024 for part of Valley Road. This is the second half. Um, we're going to do a, a full paving of Valley Road as opposed to mobilizing and then breaking down and then remobilizing. Uh, we do have two years to spend the 2024 grant money, so that won't be an issue. And this way we pave all of Valley Road um, at one time. That's great. So we've maximized our DOT grants by using it for one long road in two projects that will be put together. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, um, let's see. Wait a second. We've got to do the motions first. Uh, you have you have did that. You Roll have call, please. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Number five is appointing Theodore Padovano and Alexander Medrick as members of the Clark Volunteer Fire Department. I'll move that. Thank you, Councilman Minetti. Do I have a second? I'll Thank you, O'Connor. Okay. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Uh, as, and as we discussed at our workshop meeting, we wish both gentlemen, Theodore Padovano and Alexander Medrick, best of luck, and we appreciate their service. So thank you. 
Okay, number six is seeking approval of the director of the Division of Local Government Services for insertion of a special item of revenue in the amount of $39,833.21 for the Clean Communities Grant. Do we have a motion? I'll move that, please. Thank you, Councilman O'Connor. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Number seven is seeking approval of the director of the Division of Local Government Services for insertion of a special item of revenue in the amount of $64,000 for the Local Recreation Improvement Grant. Uh, Mr. Ulrich, do you want to elaborate further on this special grant? Yeah, I'll, I'll just chime up on this one, mm -hmm. uh, Madam President. Uh, Thank you. We're going for a grant to expand the restrooms at the uh, Brewer Gymnasium area. Uh, I guess when you run such a popular recreation program as Ralph does, the building is always full, it's always crowded. Our summer camp, there's eight, 900 kids a day there and we need some extra bathroom space. So we're not really going crazy. We're gonna um, add a couple of facilities in there. It's not so much a big construction project. We are bumping out a little bit of the men's room to fit another commode in there, but it's something that's gonna be done uh, hopefully sometime in August when uh, everything slows down at the rec center. So for your comfort and enjoyment, thank you. Thank you, do I have a motion, Council? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second that, please. Thank you, Councilman Smith and Councilman O'Connor. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Okay, number eight is award of contract to Waste Management of New Jersey for solid waste services for bulky waste type 13 and 13C at a rate of $114.12 per ton. Move that, please. Thank you, Councilman Hun. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman Smith. <coughs> Roll call when you're ready. Councilman Hun. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. Number nine is authorizing the tax collector to prepare and mail estimated tax bills in accordance with public laws of 1994, chapter 72. Okay, so this uh, resolution is giving permission to prepare estimated tax bills since the state did not get back to us on our final tax rate. All the paperwork has been submitted for, oh, quite a while back. Um, since they're running behind, we'll be uh, issuing estimated tax bills to August 1st. Do you have a motion? I'll move that. Thank you, Councilman Minetti. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Roll call when you're ready, Madam Clerk. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minetti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. This time we'll move on to the consent agenda resolutions. First resolution is refunding construction permit number 23-688 for 37 Lupine Way in the amount of $400. Number 11 is authorizing the tax collector to refund overpayment of sewer fees in the amount of $150. 12 is authorizing the tax collector to refund overpayment of taxes in the amount of $17,639.71. And 13 is authorizing the tax collector to apply sewer account balance adjustments as credit in the amount of $458.37. Do you have a motion to adopt, Council? I'll move that. Thank you, Councilman Minniti. Thank you, Councilman Hund. Roll call when you're ready, Madam Clerk. Councilman Hund. Yes. Councilman Minniti. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Toll. Yes. Council President Albanese. Yes. At this time, we'll, um, I'll ask the clerk, do we have any new business on the calendar? There is no new business. Okay, this time we'll move on to public comments. I'm going to open up the meeting uh, for anyone who would like to come forward. If you come forward, please state your name and address for the clerk, and all remarks shall be addressed to the council as a body and shall not exceed five minutes in duration. 
Is there anyone who wishes to come forward? Hello, Nancy Twosk is 43 Colonial Drive. I prepared something tonight which really is to address the people here and not to address the county. I'll do something different for them in particular. So I'm going to read what I prepared because I've practiced it a couple times. At the town council meeting on June 3rd, I became aware of a project Union County is embarking on to turn several areas of natural preserves in Clark into asphalt and playgrounds. I sent an email to the business administrator and the members of the council. I also spoke at the last two county commissioner meetings. After I was born, I came home from the hospital to Clark, New Jersey, when it was lots of farms and woods. As a kid, I played with the other neighborhood kids in the woods behind our houses until the developers got a hold of the Kaufman property and changed the idyllic area to homes and asphalt. But at least back then, developers left trees on the properties. Now there are no single family houses being built, no woods, no farms, except for the Schifferstein's. I'm not sure if they're still here for now. And instead we have huge apartment complexes, storage facilities, and asphalt. I know we can't turn back the clock, but we have a chance to save a bit of the past by asking the county commissioners to rethink the size and scope of the Clark Reservoir project. The dredging and aeration of the reservoir are great plans, and maybe one boat launch and a fishing pier, a couple natural walking paths. But the rest of the plans are just another destruction of nature for gadgets that need maintenance, increases traffic on roads with speeding issues already, and attracts visitors who leave garbage and make noise, so the quiet space that used to be there is now a neighborhood annoyance. I do have a comment about the money. And just for on the record, the project received $40 million, of which $30 million came from the American Rescue Plan, which is the COVID relief stimulus package. And I'll leave it for the county to ask about understand, and understanding how a park justifies this spending out of pandemic funds. How many of the Clark elected officials walked Wendell Place, Lefferts Lane, Lakewood Boulevard, Yorktown Drive, Featherbed Lane, Melvin Court? We're talking about at least five neighborhoods in wards two and four. Has anyone visited owners of the houses on Wendell, Lefferts, Francis, Lakeside, Melvin, and more to see what their lives are like now and envision their lives with parking lots, boat trailers, people they don't know walking the walking paths that cut along their yards, kitty trains whistle blowing while they're relaxing with the barbecue. I've done that door knocking and walking, and it's heartbreaking. Even though I'm not directly affected by the reservoir project, I'm here to support my fellow townspeople because that is the type of town Clark is, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. That is what forms the fabric of Clark. I'm a member of a grassroots group calling ourselves Clark Reservoir Committee. We started a petition and have over 850 signatures with 600 from Clark, 50 from Cranford, 49 from Rawway, 37 from Union, 26 from Linden, 20 from Westfield, and 14 from Scotch Plains. I left a copy of the petitions with the clerk at the county commissioner's meeting last night. I hope you will work with the citizens of Clark who are speaking out an objection to the size and scope of the Clark Reservoir proposed recreational area. As elected officials in a democracy, which is a word that is way overused nowadays, but it's a system of government by the whole population through elected representatives. You are our voice, our elected representatives. Give people hope so they stop saying, government will do what it wants to do. And as for the meeting, referred to as a meet and greet at the commissioner's meeting last night, let's make sure that the July 2nd meeting, which is a curious day, a lot of people might not be able to attend, that it's broadcasted, taped, maybe Zoomed, be totally transparent, and not have it look like a performative check the box move. Please help save Clark, maybe write a resolution, stand with the people. Thank you. Thank you. Come forward. How you doing? Uh, Ron Ordner, 89 Francis Drive. I want, to pre I want to first say thank you for getting the county in here, Sal. I appreciate that um, as well, getting them in here. But like she mentioned, July 2nd is kind of a questionable date 
Reason being, probably the biggest vacation week of the year. We're asking you if you guys could also set another date up. I understand that there's meetings at the county level. Ron, Ron well, ex excuse me for interrupting. Sure, no, you can interrupt. Sorry. I know you pretty well, so I can interrupt a friend if I will. <laughs> but anyhow, um, Jim and I were working on trying to get something sooner, and the county needs to get their commissioners, their engineers, you know, so it's a lot of, it is a lot of moving parts. They weren't trying to delay it or play any games. We were trying to get it like this week. There was a lot of uh, high school graduation going on. Uh, so people had commitments with that. Uh, next week, I think a couple of their engineers couldn't make it, if I recall properly. So, you know, we were hustling them to go along, and they were working hard with us on it. They weren't stonewalling us, but it's like, okay, this is the date. Can we do that? And I figured, hey, it's better than waiting till later in July. So that's why okay. it was. No, I appreciate everything you've done. Yeah, I want, no, well, I just want to explain to you. I, I don't want, want to know you, if we can have another meeting. I, I got it, Ron. I don't, in my long time in this business, and I gotta say, dealing with the county, I've always, they've always been very fair with me. I didn't see any stonewalling. They were trying to accommodate it as quickly as possible, but there's a lot of moving parts with people. So okay. I, like I just wanted you to know that. You know, I'm okay with the dredging. Obviously it has a lot to do with, in my opinion, the flooding in the town. Um, I just think when you give the county $40 million, they don't need to spend all 40. They can probably use that money somewhere else in the county. And I'll talk to the county on that, but that's all I wanna say, thank you. Thank you. Move forward. Thank you, Bonnie Bustler. I live on 95 Meadow Road. And I don't know if, if this is the place to ask questions or not, but I took a ride down Wendell today, and the thought of opening that up to parking areas and children's safety, I just question the safety of that measure to put all of that activity in the reservoir area. And I wondered if our police department is a size to take care of what will happen with the influx of people coming in. I also wondered why, I think in 2016, there was a discussion about putting a um, ice rink concession stand in Oak Ridge Park, and that did not take place. And now they're talking about putting it in the reservoir area. And I agree with what people are saying in regard to the noise and the privacy and the safety for children and animals. And I, I don't know, I won't be here on uh, July 2nd, but I don't know if, it, do I send a letter to somebody? How do I approach this? You would, ha you would have to approach it by sending a letter to the county manager or an email to the county manager and expressing your um, thoughts and opinion on it. And if you don't have that capability and you want to bring it by town hall, Jim and one of our staff members will email it for you. We can scan it and email it for you. And not to debate because we let you have your five minutes, but there's no ice rink going in there. There's a plastic skating area, but it's not the ice rink that they were talking about at Oak Ridge Park. The one at Oak Ridge Park was being talked about was what's in Warren Echo Park right now. I know there are some misconceptions, and I don't want to interrupt you as a speaker, but there is no ice rink going in there, as you might think. Okay, and what about a concession stand? True. So far, it's on the plan. And just let me make one other thing clear, folks. Um, the county's also said to me that they had to have a plan to submit to DEP to get permit processing going, and that takes a long time for what's most important to me, the dredging. And it, this is not a concrete plan. It's not etched in concrete. Please understand that. It's a concept. And concepts should bring debate and ideas, and I'm all for that. You know, not anger, not, you know, we're not gonna show up here with torches and swords and go after the camp. No, express your, in a professional manner, your thoughts and, and ideas like you are tonight to the folks that were up so far. And then they'll, I think, take a favorable look at to what the majority's looking for. But I'm sorry, go ahead, ma'am. Well, who do I ask the question of, can our police department handle that? You can, you can ask that question to me. Yes, they can. Number one, the site itself will be governed, uh, patrolled by the county police. 
okay? They would be controlled by the county police. You know, folks, I know you don't like the entertainment aspect of the park. I get that. I read social media. I've talked to a lot of people, and I've talked to people that are very happy about it also. So, you know, there's pro and con on both sides of the aisle. But at the end of the day, they're not putting Bowcraft in here. I mean, it's not Bowcraft Amusement Park with, you know, they're going to have a concession stand. They want to have kayaking on the water, which if you're talking about nature, I'm all for it. Because I think putting a child, a, a young man who grew up in this town, in the reservoir, we didn't have kayaks. What we used to do was take cement mixers, they were called tintins, and we used to go out in them. Okay? I mean, after we played baseball for eight hours that day, and we'd float around in our backyard and we thought what we were doing. But, you know, in my opinion, even, even if it was passed just the way it is, it's going to be more community. I mean, do you really think people are coming from Union or Berkeley Heights or New Providence for a little choo-choo train ride and a little carousel? I don't think so. In my own opinion, I don't think so. And I'm not saying they're going to be there. It's my opinion. You have yours. So, you know, I'm not buying in Wendell Place. I lived on Wendell Place with my wife when we first got married. I know the value of Wendell Place. One lady brought that up. So I get all that. So those are the things I'm concerned about. But yes, we can handle it. But to you. Thank you. OK. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. OK. I wasn't intending on speaking tonight. I'm, my name is Annabella Ordner, and I live on 89 Francis Drive. But from my understanding, it would be the third county park within a couple of miles. Um, I just feel like I live right behind the woods. I enjoy the wildlife, even at night when I hear the fox crunching on whatever it is they're crunching on. I love the deer coming up to my fence. Um, I just feel like, why do we need another county park in this small town? Why not maintain the parks we already have? Um, I love the reservoir. I love the view. I'm not against outsiders. I am an outsider. I grew up in Elizabeth. Um, I teach in Warren Township now, so I'm not against outsiders coming in. I don't necessarily feel the park will draw. I mean, the train is questionable. Um, I do feel some people will come. I went to Ponderosa Park for the spray park when my kids were small. That's fun. So, That's fun, the spray park. Exactly. So there will be people drawn. And again, I, I don't even care. Put that little choo-choo train in Echo Lake or Esposito, find like one of the other county parks in this area to do that for. Preserve that wildlife. It's beautiful back there. I always told people I swore I would never live in Union County again. We moved out of Union County for a little while. I lived in Middlesex County. And I swore I would never move back to Union County. There were taxes. Um, but I did. And when I moved into Union County, I was going through a lot with my little one. And I fell in love. I can't even remember what my house looked like when I bought that house in 2010. But I remember the reservoir. I remember the woods. I remember nature. And I said, to, and I keep saying to people, I don't even feel like I'm in Union County when I'm home. I hope that you would support and fight for us, maintain the parks you already have. I don't mind a pier out there. I think it's great. We've let kids through our yard into the woods to go fishing. I don't mind those kinds of things, but a choo-choo train, preserve that. Let them walk through the woods. Put a nice walking path out to the reservoir. Put a little dock there, kayak. I love the idea, but preserve it. I think I want to feel like I always felt. I don't even feel like I'm in Union County when I'm out there. I grew up in Elizabeth. And I hope that you would consider these things. I hope this is not going to become a political issue, but just to preserve the integrity, the wildlife, that little piece of heaven that we have in Clark. Let's keep it the way it is. March Burson from Winter's Court. Um, I'm not here to argue about this plan for the reservoir, but I'm here to try to understand why our council and our mayor 
um, are not going to take a stand against Union County to prevent this from happening. It seems to me that our town government should be protecting the tranquility, privacy, and property value of its citizens here. And the homeowners near that park that they're talking about constructing are going to be horribly affected by the presence of, of something like that. It doesn't belong there. Union County's got Oak Ridge. They could do whatever they want. They took it away from all the golfers in the county. I don't agree with the mayor that Union County makes wonderful decisions. I could go through a whole list, but that's not your problem. I'm just here because I really feel that Clark's government should be helping its citizens protect the environment by their homes. Thank you. Well, I, I'd like to, as you sit down, had time, I'd like to take that comment and resent. You have no clue what I'm talking to the county about and why. And I'm not making it into a political issue. I can make this into a Republican-Democrat issue like that. But when you have 28 years in government and you learn how to work with people to get the most out of the county for your citizens, I can tell you right now there hasn't been a mayor in the history of this town and maybe others that got more out of Union County than I have working across the party aisle. So if you want us to show up with chains and, and torches and scream and yell and carry on, you got the wrong mayor. I do my business across tables at conference rooms and on telephones. So I resent that you said we're not sticking up. I got a little news for you, Mr. Burson, and you're my neighbor across the street from me. Excuse I heard exactly what you said. I heard exactly what you said, that we're not taking a stand. There are, excuse me, excuse me. There's nothing to understand. I told you earlier in the evening what I was doing on your behalf. But there are also people out here who like the idea. Who like the idea. So where do, what do I do with them? I just say, oh, I gotta go with them because they have green shirts on and they're talking louder? I have to strike a balance between the people who don't want it and the people who do want it to try to, as Ronald Reagan once said, try to get 75% of what you want and work on the other 25% later. So I don't want this, if this is gonna be a political issue for the other side of the aisle, they could be my guest and make it a political issue. We're not making it a political issue. We'll deal in a proper manner and professional manner with the county like we have been doing. I was on the phone at 9.30 this morning with the county manager, did you know that? Jim has spent how many phone calls with the county manager? I've been back and forth with him. He's a wonderful guy, he does a great job for Clark. For me, he helps me. There's people throughout Union County that may love him and may not. For me, he's always dealt with me above board. So if we want to make this into a political issue, as I said earlier in the night, you got the wrong people. We're going to do it on a professional level. If the other side wants to use this and make it into a campaign issue, be my guest. I really don't care. We're going to try to get what's best for Clark. I hope we win. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Hello everyone, I'm John Victor Jacobson. I'm a disabled veteran, a Ground Zero survivor, and I live at One Melbourne Court at the end of the reservoir there, and it's a beautiful view we have there, the reservoir. And uh, we've been there for 24 years and really enjoy it. Um, I guess what I want to say is, when is the dredging proposed to begin? That's one thing I wanted to ask. John, as far as our conversations with the county manager, they're hoping for the end of the year, but realistically, probably early next year. Okay, all right, that's good to know, thank you. And uh, the other thing I guess I wanted to know was, um, um, Well, I just, I just, I guess, want to ask you, Sal, if you could, you know, have them scale it back a little bit, or talk to them about scaling back the park a little bit, because it's you're surrounding St. Agnes Church there, and to have like a carnival ride train to run around a, a a church on a Sunday is really kind of a, kind of it, it's not a it's it's not a good fit, 
So I think if we could scale back on that whole plan. John, all I can promise you is I've been speaking with the county manager on all aspects of the plan. Excellent. So, you know, I'm not saying all negative. There's positive in there too, but we're speaking about everything because we're getting, we volunteer to have you send the emails to my administrator so we kind of knew what you were thinking and send them ahead to the county. And we've been doing that. Plus, as you know, I'm in this town day and night and talking to people all over. So I'm hearing all kinds of things. And as things pop in, I'm relaying them to them. So we are talking to them about all aspects of the project in a one professional, that, not at an open public meeting, but like I said. One thing that concerned me just, just popped up is with all the dredging that's going to happen, it's going to really muck up the roads, I think, pretty badly. And some of those roads are going to be have to be repaved and maybe the county could kick in for that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the county's going to follow all the DEP requirements and a lot of the, most of the um, sediment that they take out is going to be dried on site so there's not going to be mud going across the streets. Um, they only have the proposing two locations that they're going to be taking it out of and it's, you know you're right there's going to be and it's going to be dried out. On site. That's again. That's that's their plan. We we need to wait to see what the DEP approves. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? You here? Delia Collins, 72 Georgia Street, Clark. I attended both meetings uh, at the uh, freeholder slash commissioners. Last night we were there and I had some concerns regarding safety, water safety, potential vandalism, preventative me measures on the docks and boat ramps um, because even in our little area of Clark, in the, we had a fire in our little park several years ago, started by citizens, children, I'm sorry, from Cranford. So, you know, not everyone that comes into Clark is here to have a good time. Um, the one thing that disturbs me that the mayor keeps saying that he can't get involved, but. Okay. You said you let's, don't uh, want to hear let, about it. Let's um, let her make her statement and then you can rebut. What I would like you to do is since this map that the county supplied or the CM, CME supplied, which I made copies of, it's very hard to read if you try to enlarge it to make, is there a digital copy of this plan that we can try and enlarge it? That was produced by the county, so I think you should perhaps discuss and, that with them. Okay. Well, I can ask. I'm sure it's available. I'm sure it's available. I can't see why they wouldn't be able to provide that. Usually it's on site. You might have to go on site. Okay. And I pulled some articles from the Tap into Clark uh, back in 2015. Uh, Mr. Bonacorso said the dredging will improve the stormwater runoff and it will have a positive effect. Uh, impact on wildlife in the reservoir. Uh, in 2020, there has been ideas for a passive recreation that were sketched out in the past. We refer them to them, I'm sorry, we can refer to them when the time comes, but be assured we are not looking to put things in residents' backyards. Well, the people who live on Francis Drive, the people that live on Wendell Place, the people that live in the area, it is going into their backyards. Take a walk down Miller Avenue, see when you can look out onto the serene area of the reservoir from Miller Avenue. It is beautiful. There are deer. There was even a man out there fishing the day that I went by. And I walked over along, um, sorry, excuse me. I walked along Lakeside Drive, I went down Bartell, I went down Richard, Yorktown, Charles, Catherine Street, and all these lead to the edge of the reservoir. And all these homes that are there through the years, 
they've kept the property up, and I've heard that they, uh, the area extends all the way to the back of the falls. Uh, but people in Clark don't realize the whole list of what is happening in this area, just not only the amusement park, but during, by the Hungarian Club, which is Old Raritan Road, there's going to be another boat ramp and 32 parking spaces along with a maintenance garage. The disc golf is going to be behind the Grand Centurions. There's no parking there other than parking in the amusement park. The people on Wendell Place are receiving 18 parking spaces along with the boat ramp. And on the, on the um, downslope of Madison Hill Road by St. Mary's, there's going to be a pedestrian activated traffic light along with one on Raritan Road by, sorry, Featherbed Lane, which there's already a traffic light at Madison Hill Road and Raritan Road. I travel in Cranford every day. They have these pedestrian activated traffic signals. People don't stop. And the downslope on Madison Hill Road by St. Mary's, people do not go the traffic speed limit. On, um, okay, we have Lakeside Drive, Bartell Place, walking, par walking Trail, 18 parking spaces. Environmental and History Center on Madison Hill Road, 18 parking spaces a total of over almost 200 parking spaces from this project. And that means a lot of cars are going to be coming through Clark. Um, a lot of people are going to be coming into Clark. And I Delia, think... time's yeah. up. Okay. okay. Um, I think we get the point, and I think, you know, those who are watching this program are getting that information as well as Nancy visited the residents. So this is good, good material. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Good evening. Uh, Mary Cortazzo Semler, uh, 56 Conger Way here in Clark. Um, so I do understand from everybody here, I had uh, several things I wanted to say, but I don't want to repeat what other people have said. Um, so I'm here actually to make a suggestion. Uh, we know that uh, July 2nd is the meeting. Uh, that the county will be here making a presentation. Uh, we also know, as has been stated here, that is, that is probably uh, one of the highest weeks of vacation of the year. So my suggestion is, given that this project is, such, is of such great size and significance uh, to the people of Clark, that we work with the county to see if we can add a meeting at some time in the future to allow ample notice for people to attend and if we think there's going to be a lot of people, perhaps have a space that's appropriate for the number of people that would be attending. So that would be my suggestion, so that given that everybody for and against and everywhere in between has something to say, and it is likely to be one of the biggest things that affect affects our community for many years to come, that we ensure that we have full participation from the community. So I would say, you know, rather than say everybody's going to be away um, and people can't participate and we're sending emails, which is certainly fine because we should be encouraging communication, that we try to work with the county perhaps on a date in August or later, sometime before the project is due to start, so that everybody has the opportunity to be heard. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council Mayor. John Greaves, 30 Parkway Drive. Uh, is this right? I just, uh, just wanted to speak a little bit about something else, but I guess, you know, seeing tonight. Um, I was at the meeting, the county meeting last night, and uh, I saw these people and some others speaking about the uh, reservoir, and, you know, it's great to see the community coming together to have their voice heard. And um, I, I kind of saw tonight kind of what I think I saw last night as well, is that I, they don't seem like, it seems to me that they don't feel like they're being heard. And they're coming to you guys asking for help. And I don't think that the way that the mayor acted tonight 
demonstrates that a willingness to help them. And that's, that's just not the way. What happened tonight was not necessary. The mayor can take exception to things. I don't think that every single thing that is you know, asked by the community, every single detail, needs to be absolutely enacted by the council of the mayor. But it should be heard and it should be responded to respectfully. I don't think that that lady deserved what happened tonight. And I'm, I'm just not very happy with that. Um, so I, I'm not going to repeat what's been said. These people have a better understanding of, of what's going on there. So um, I would just say, please try and be better advocates, better representatives for these people. They're just concerned about things that are going on right in their backyard. Um, they, maybe they get upset. Maybe they upset you guys, but they don't deserve that type of response. Um, on another note, the thing that I was actually um, a little, uh, I, I wanted to bring before the reservoir stuff, was um, the 27 Westfield Avenue development that was approved by the planning board. Um, it, it, is that going to be a pilot, or do we have any information on that? There's no information about it yet? It's, okay, so it could be, it could not be, we don't know yet. Is there any idea of when we might know some of that information? And they bring it to us. Okay. They if they want to. Okay. Um, would, is the council thinking about doing a pilot there? Because it doesn't seem like it's, a good... That's not how it works. Well, why would the council think about it when it's the uh, owner of the property's option to come to us? We don't think about it. If he comes to us and asks for a plan, then we talk to him about it. We don't sit okay. there and say, oh, gee, there's a vacant lot there that might be built on. Should it be a pilot or shouldn't it be a pilot? Right. So what happens well, is the planning board yeah. makes a decision if it's an area of in need of redevelopment, if it qualifies, if it qualifies upon the request. So the request has to be made first, then an evaluation is done, and then that's presented to the council after the planning board does its work. That's how the process works. Okay? Okay. okay. Um, so let me just at least put it out there and just say that I would not like to see that particular property um, get uh, a pilot um, program because we have to follow the laws. Okay, the laws but you guys are, have discretion. Evaluation about would be done upon the request. If it's legally permissible, then it would be presented to the council. And I'm asking you guys, not please make don't. those laws. Okay, but we'll, yes, they can ask. Of course, it's legally permissible to ask, and it's legally permissible to petition for something. What I'm saying is, is please don't because. The pilot programs hurt our schools, oh, and please. it. There is no no impact yeah. on the schools for pilots, and in particular, the township of Clark has given the money that the school would have received to the schools. Would have top received, of their budget, but would okay. have received prior to the development. That's what I believe the ordinance was. So prior to the development, there was not 39 units there. After the development, there are 39 units there. So there is a very good chance that there's going to be additional um, students. Maybe it's not 39 students, but it's going to be more than was there before, probably. And that adds students to the school, burden on the school. And if they're getting the same as before, they're they have to do more with the same amount as before. And I don't like seeing that. And also, you, you know. Have 30 I seconds. Okay, so real quick, um, it just seems like you guys are, are, or not you guys, but the developer is removing, uh, there's two small businesses there, there's the sushi place and um, I think that's a salon next to it, and then um, it's going to be replaced with one smaller, much smaller square footage um, small business, and for a downtown area that's going to be kind of a business district, that seems counterintuitive, and I don't like that. Um, I, have, I have more to say about it, but my time is up. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Anyone else who would like to come forward? Okay, seeing no one, I'd like to close this portion of the meeting. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Thank you, Councilman Hunt. We are going to move on to Mayor, Council, and Professional Comments at this time. Mayor? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, just to clear up a couple of issues, uh, Mr. Greaves got offended offended the way I 
defended myself when I was told by a citizen who doesn't know the work ethic I have for this project that I don't care. I'll, honestly, completely untrue. Jim and I have spent a lot of time on this project, probably more than we should, because it's not our project, number one. Um, Mrs. Caruso, I mean, Mrs. Collins got up tonight and made some uh, comments about uh, that we don't want to get involved. Um, she quoted an article from the Tap into Clark, which was true. We asked for a dredging for the environment, for flooding, for the aesthetics of the reservoir. We did ask for that. Um, we also said that we had a plan that probably some of you don't know about, but some of you who've been in town a long time do. Um, the prior mayor, when there was the Save the Reservoir movement back in the 90s, wanted to put walking paths and fishing piers along the reservoir. Uh, there was a reservoir committee. When I became mayor, and we took a long, hard look at the finances of the town at that point, because we were left basically empty, uh, we made a decision to scrap the project because those walking paths and fishing piers had to be maintained by our DPW, which was too small. It had to be patrolled by our police department, which was not big enough at the time to do that. So it's when I had the great idea, not good idea, great idea, to turn it over to the county. Because could you imagine if we were sitting here today telling you we were gonna have to spend 30 to $40 million on dredging the reservoir, what people would be saying? They would be lose, losing it. Uh, first off, there was a comment uh, about disc golf. That's out. It's already been told to me. Disc golf, disc golf is out. It's on the project behind the Grand Centurions area. It's out. Uh, I'll give you another little tidbit. I know the parking spots on Lakeside, they're out. So when we say we don't care and we're not communicating and trying to turn maybe this into a political issue, I don't know. I could tell you one thing. Three candidates for the Democratic Party are sitting right there. And in Elizabeth, that's their party. That's their party. So, I mean, they could turn around and, and take the bull by the horns. I know they had a representative there last night representing the group, speaking out. Or if our, our officials are silent, far from silent. I'm not going to sit out here every day and bang a drum and tell you what I do each and every moment of every day. We're working on a project. Mr. Ordner here, know him a long time. We're talked about, first phone call I got on a project was Ron, about the train in back of his house. That phone call was made and conveyed to the county immediately because it made a hell of a lot of sense what he was saying. So, I mean, it's a plan. It's not etched in stone. And for the amateurs in a room that don't understand what's going on here, the bottom line here is, do you folks realize you're talking about having extra meetings and doing this and doing that? Do you know? when the credenzo is, when the big finale is going to be? Who knows what meetings? Anybody have an idea? They have an idea? I'll tell you when. When they come before the township planning board with a capital improvement project. So you got an ultimate bite at the apple by citizens of Clark. You know, oh gee, let's have more meetings, let's have more fun, this is great, let's go start a policy. You know, that's all great, it's great sound bites. But if you understood the process, ultimately, when this plan is etched in concrete, they're going to be right here in front of the Township Planning Board for approval. Any other questions? Thank you for your professional. Some people had some really great comments out here, and I do appreciate you. And we have concerns, too. The Fishing pier that I'm totally in favor for and boat pier, which I'm totally in favor for, at the Hungarian Club is right across the street from my house. Totally for that. How better to put a child on your lap as a young parent and row out into that water and see fish swimming by 
and turtles popping their heads up and frogs jumping off the thing, like I used to do in a cement mixer, though. Okay, we weren't privy enough to have a kayak or a canoe. To see that thing. Back, like I said, in the 90s, there was plans for that project through the local government. Do you know on the Featherbed Lane Bridge, both sides of that, when I was a young boy, on a January, February, Sunday, Saturday, there was at least 100 people on both sides of that bridge ice skating. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous to see. People came from out of town. People in town came. So it, it was gorgeous. Now it's an island out there. It's a mess. It needs to be cleaned. It needs to be dredged. So I'm not against any kind of water activity. I can tell you straight out. And like I said, the choo-choo train, from what I understood, even in my conversations, it's not going to have tracks and none of that. It's, I think it's like the thing that Ralph rents on the recreation. It's going to be on blacktop if it goes in. Nobody's saying it's going in. So yeah, I do agree. There's some aspects I think are a little overdone. I think the council agrees with that. You know, and there's some aspects that we like. But the meeting happened when the county set the meeting. Clark Township didn't set the meeting. We gave him our available dates, and there was many of them. But I also understand, being in meetings most every day of the week, that you gotta get their lawyer, their engineer, you got this person in the county, that person. Sometimes Jim and I will say, he'll say to me, hey, could you be for a Zoom meeting at two o'clock? Jim, I can't be here at two, I'm gonna be over there. Could we do it in the morning? Now they can't do it, this guy can't do it, let me switch it to this day. Sometimes you get three or four people on a Zoom meeting, it takes days to figure out. People have schedules, you all know that. So like, like I said to you, I've spent way too much time on this tonight. I don't wanna hear the sarcasm about the local government because you don't know what we're doing. We want to hear what you got to say at that meeting. Come July 2nd. And then you may not even see them come before the planning board to somewhere in 2025. Who knows? You know, again, they needed a plan to get permits out of the DEP. That's the DEP moves like a snail going uphill in the middle of January on ice. So I, I don't know, uh, John, my friend there asked, when could this maybe be started? I said, they said, long shot, end of the year, probably into next year. I'll bet anybody a coffee, a quick check, that it probably be maybe next summer or next fall, a year from this summer or next fall, who knows? So don't get excited. Be heard, bring your thoughts forward. We encourage that. We're, I'm gonna be here that night listening to what you have to say. I'll listen to what the county has to say. And then I do what I normally do. I go to work across the room in a conference table or on a telephone, professional. Because like I said, you don't like that. There's an election year, I think so, right? An election year, I could be out here banging a tambourine saying, let's go get them. They're Democrats. The hell do I care? But I do care because I work with these people all the time and they've been fair to me. And that's all I can ask for anybody to be is fair. We can disagree, but be fair. And I try to be because they're elected officials and I understand sometimes we as elected officials get put into a vice and we get squeezed and it's not a fun place to be. So we try to be professional and work with everybody. So I hope that answers some questions I had here tonight. And I, I thank you all. And as far as the pilot program goes, John, you've got so much to learn about the pilot program and how a government works. We've been through this with you a hundred times. You think we're screwing the schools. We are absolutely not. How about you put this one in your pipe and smoke on this for a while? You know, I didn't even think about this. We give the Clark School District the middle of our Brewer Municipal Building for their preschool, for children of needs. Do you know how much we save the Clark School District every year by doing that? Over $3 million a year was told to me about a month or two ago. And I said, well, there's children in special needs. To send them out of district could be 80 to 100,000 a kid. 80 to 100,000 a year. Do you know what the school board pays me for that spot? Zero. 
Zero. Why? Because those parents already paid it in their tax bill. Why would I go take money from the school district? I'm Mayor Luck getting sworn in. Two days before, we have 20 inches of snow. We helped plow the schools. They were totally incompetent then. The former mayor said to me, Sal, here's the hours we spent plowing those schools. Make sure you bill them when you become mayor. I walked into my BA at the time, John Lace. I said, is this guy on drugs? Is this ridiculous? Why would I take money from my left pocket and put it in my right pocket? The people at Clark pay that. Whether you pay it in the school budget or you pay it in the town budget, it's paid by the people of Clark. So then we forged the relationship of working together, helping one another in the school district. I wasn't using that space in the middle of Brewer. Now, if they want new rugs or paint or something, they pay for that. The heat, the hot water, the facilities are free because the people of Clark pay for that building and we're helping the school district by having it. So I don't want to hear this nonsense about what we do or don't do for the schools. Go look the history up of what went on here prior to us and what we do now. Thank you. Turn it over to you, Madam President. Thank you. Councilman Hunt. Thank you, Madam President. Just a few things I want to congratulate Anderson Schiffstein for his Eagle Scout project. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize it was a Lego project until tonight. That's uh, very cool for him to do. And also, as the mayor pointed out, he's a very round, uh, rounded individual for a young man. Um, does multiple things with his, himself, so wish him good luck in the future. Congratulations to all the graduates um, from the high school and middle school and all the way down uh, there. And thank you to our business administrator for his hard work for the grant for paving Valley Road. It's been a eyesore or however you want to call it for many years now since I became on council and we've been, I've been asking for portions of that to be fixed and now the whole entire road will be fixed. So thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate that. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, before I do uh, give my remarks, I just want to mention something about the Westfield Avenue project. Um, there was talk about the two businesses uh, that are no longer going to be there. But let's talk about the businesses that are there, the 20 businesses that can benefit from the redevelopment of the Westfield Avenue project. Okay, the paper chases, the jewelry store, the restaurants, the pizzerias, they could all benefit from all of this. Okay, so we might lose two businesses, but we're going to gain it in other businesses. So I think it's a win-win, and I was on a planning board meeting that night, and I just thought it's a great start to the redevelopment down on Westfield Avenue. It had to start somewhere, and I'm glad it's starting there. Um, with that, over the past week, uh, you know, we had uh, all our schools graduate. We had uh, stepping up, uh, moving up ceremonies, and I want to congratulate all our students. I attended uh, some of the scholarship events, including um, the athletic scholarships and the... Um, the uh, educational scholarship, academic scholarships, just want to congratulate everyone on that. And I just want to congratulate the two new members to the fire department. Uh, with that, that concludes my report, and thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman Minitti. Councilman O'Connor. Thank you. First off, I want to thank the mayor for his comments this evening. Um, I know you take my calls. I know Jim takes my calls uh, for the second ward, as well as the township. And I know how hard you guys work. And it's hard when you do the work and you don't get the credit. And we heard some of that tonight. So um, on behalf of myself, thank you very much for all the hard work in trying to get what's best for the Township of Clark. Um, congratulations to uh, Anderson Schifferstein, Eagle Scout's hard to get. And that's something you have on your resume, not only for college, but for um, your career. You know, employers look for things like that, look for people who are dedicated, who can start a project and take it to completion. Not many people do. You know, listen. You know, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts is great, but not many have the dedication to go all the way. And for the ones that do, it's rewarded down the road in, with uh, college applications and again, in, uh, in, in job offers. Uh, congratulations to the uh, two new members of the fire department. And I, and I know I bring this up a lot. You know, my dad was a fireman, and I know the sacrifices the family makes. 
and I know the sacrifices that the firemen make. So again, it's, it's, a, it's a long road, and uh, you know, again, unless you do it, or unless you're part of it, you, you don't know what it takes, and you don't know the sacrifices that people make for it. Um, we just know that they come out when we call, they get the job done, they go back to the station, but that's not the end of it. They gotta clean the trucks, clean and duty nights, there's a whole bunch that goes along with it. And it's a community, same thing with the emergency squad. But again, thank you for uh, all the volunteerism in this town. And again, have a great summer, and we'll see you in July. Thank you, Councilman O'Connor. Councilman Smith. Thank you, Council President Albanese. Uh, just two quick reminders. Uh, this Sunday is the Rock the Block party out front uh, of Brewer and the high school. There'll be a stage there with bands. There's uh, going to be antique cars. A lot of the uh, town businesses will be there, so please come on out and support them and a lot of the uh, town organizations. And regarding the Clark Rec program, again, if you are interested in registering your child, please come do so ASAP, because it starts in one week. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Toll. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, again, to the Sheeperstein, it's pronounced Sheeperstein, uh, longtime Clarkite since 1903. The entire family goes back to 03, came over from Germany. I'm not gonna give you a history lesson, but I'm gonna say, Anderson, who's the Eagle Scout tonight, his grandfather was a Battle of the Bulge prisoner. He was caught behind enemy lines defending our freedom. And his grandfather was of German Jewish descent. What happened was he, the Germans did not like that and they took it out on him a lot more severe. He almost died, but he came back to the strength of family and home. And he came back and that's how Anderson and Anderson's father his uncle, Fred, the Sheepersteins commit to the American dream every day by working a farm and running a business in this community. God bless them and thank you, Anderson, for putting another step on the family tree of greatness. To Chris Bocarelli, former fire chief. Chris served back in the 90s as a chief, but Chris was always known as the term planning board was brought up tonight. Chris was the fire, lay, fire department liaison to the planning board. Anytime a proposal came before the board, Chris gave the fire department's take on the ordinances, on the, um, how the fire controls and stuff were to be taken care of. Chris was a pillar of this community and he will be missed. He was not well at the end. And our family, to our, our condolences to his family. He was a great man and we will miss him very much. Again, I've said everything else. I will say, I hope to see you on July 2nd if work doesn't call. And we will wish you well. Good night. Okay. Um, Councillor, any comments? No comment. Madam Clerk? No comments, thank you. Mr. Ulrich? I got a couple of quick things. Um, the pools, 50th anniversary is on July 13th, so I want to make sure everybody knows that. And also, our fire department is August 17th is going to be the 100th anniversary. So uh, just get those dates on everybody's calendars. Um, the, another exciting item, uh, recycling. I just want to bring it to everybody's attention. Uh, we have on our Facebook page, on our website, on the recycling app, what's recyclable and what's not. I also got a video that uh, Liz is gonna be putting up on the website about the recycling. A lot of people think it's a good thing to throw everything that's plastic, everything that's metal, everything that's aluminum into that pail. That's not a good idea. That causes a lot of issues. Few of the issues are you know, mixing contaminated um, items. So when plastic bags, um, rope gets caught in the machine, it breaks the machine, it, it gives them issues, and it brings up our cost. Um, the reduced market rates, so when we have contaminated uh, recycling going in, we get reduced rates on the recycled material. So there's, there's issues there. Then there's also some safety risks with batteries and paint. Right? The battery should never be put into the recycling pail. Um, and I, I know people think that they're doing good, they're doing you know, what they need to do for the environment, but please understand that it does cause a lot of problems and we're getting a lot of complaints from waste management uh, on what's going through. And you know, it benefits the environment and it also benefits the town uh, monetarily if we follow the rules. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
Excuse me. I'd like to just Thank speak you. up. Um, the county does have programs where they actually do have, you know, where you can bring your tires, you can bring propane tanks, you can bring batteries, oil, all those, even old gas. I know it's on the county website. So um, I don't know, Jim, you, you know as, as well as I do that that's there. Yeah, and we post all of that. But, you know, in the blue recycling pails, you know, just if everybody could just be aware of, of what it is what's there, and, um, and if there's a question, you could always call myself, you could call um, Jennifer, who's our recycling coordinator, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll help you out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to give my remarks now. So this evening, for people who are watching this um, on YouTube or hopefully at home live, um, we had a lot of discussion about the Clark Reservoir dredging and proposed recreational area project. And if you go to the township's website, you can get a link to the documents that the county had. So please be aware, get informed. A lot of information was given about the facts of what's included in this program. Um, I do appreciate everyone coming tonight and giving us your feedback. That's what we want to hear. It's a little hard for us if you say, I don't like this project. I'm going to go sit down. What is it? You know, it's a little frustrating for the mayor and the BA and for all of us. All the time that's gone into this, especially for those two and, and, and their predecessor, uh, over five years, we want that water dredged. We need that water dredged for the health of the animals, the birds, everything. I live on the reservoir. Um, if you want to be heard, listen, there's no good night for the meeting. I know it's a bad week, but if we do it in August, it's a bad day in August. It's always going to be a bad day. If you want to be heard, do both. Communicate to the county, send them an email with your comments, get your detailed comments in there, and then come to the meeting. But if you can't be heard at the meeting, um, at least you'll have your comments in, and it, or if you can't be there. Try to be specific about what you object to. As far as some of the questions that came up, yes, they can probably take the American Rescue Plan money is built for, is, is provided for things like saving the reservoir. That money is earmarked for projects like that. I don't know what the dredging will cost, but I assure you probably a large part of the money is going to the dredging. I just want to remind everyone too, when we had the Esposito lot available. It was going to be a museum. Do you see a museum there? No. No. We listened to everyone. We discussed it. We worked with the county. Yes, it doesn't mean we're not listening to you when you come here. We want to hear what people have to say. Some people want those things. Some people don't. Be specific when you tell us what you want. And then come and be heard. They're making it convenient. You can come right here in Clark to speak to them. Come on July 2nd from 7 to 9, it's a Tuesday night, to be heard, especially if you live in those places and you object to the parking. Yes, no one wants people walking in their backyard. Uh, people who, all of us who live on the reservoir don't want that. Fine, come and speak about it. Um, as I said, you know, the, the um, when they took Oak Ridge over and made, made it into recreational, they, they were gonna have a, a rollerblade park, they were gonna have this, they were gonna have that. Another example, things change. Those are small items to change, the little choo-choo train and what have you. But the dredging is our primary goal here, and I don't wanna lose sight of that. We really need that to be done. Uh, that is going to be the most beneficial thing if you want the wildlife to exist here, and also to prevent flooding in this town. The water has no place to go. Um, Angel, can I just cut in for a second because you hit ahead. a good point. Uh, dredging is the most important thing in my eyes, but I did um, say to the county when I was speaking to them, I said, you know, we started out dredging this thing. And he said, yes, but the commissioners felt if we're going to dredge it and make it nice, they want people to be able to use it and enjoy it. Meaning, I would take that more as the kayaking and stuff. And she made another great point, and Brian made the point last month. When we got them to build the um, Esposito Park, they were gonna put a museum, a ch ch children's museum there. Children's museum. And we had conversation, and it's never been there. She's right, disc golf was supposed to be at Oak Ridge Park. 
Then they were going to put an ice rink there. They, they didn't do it. Things changed. So yes, your concerns are great, and you should express them. But you know, um, Pat O'Connor said that you know, Mayor got upset he didn't get credit. Pat, I don't want credit. That's my job. What I don't want is people telling me what they think I'm doing or not doing, because they don't know what goes on up here. They don't know the hours Jim and I have put in. You can ask that question, and I would be respectfully happy to answer that question. So I'm not looking for credit, but I'm not looking to be told, well, you don't care, we, we didn't do that. You have no clue, zero. You show up once a month, we show up 30 days a month. 30 days a month. My phone doesn't stop on nights, holidays, weekends, and everything else. And you guys know I'm available on social media to you. Whenever I see something I can fix and help, I'm out there or explaining to you. So, I mean, that does light a fire. And I don't care who didn't like how it was offended or not. It means nothing to me. You speak with respect, you'll get treated with respect. Thank you. Okay, don't forget um, this Sunday, Rock the Block Street Fair. Come out, see your neighbors, other town folks, the businesses in town, and uh, also I'll be there uh, at the recreation table. Members of the library will be there, so hope to see you there. Uh, at this time, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned.